This is Dr. Greg Ellis talking about diabetes, worldwide epidemic of diabetes, particularly hard hit is our own country, the United States, where there are 23.6 million type 2 diabetics. Now, what's the difference between type 2 diabetes and type 1 diabetes? Type 2 is generally characterized as adult onset. You don't get it till you're older. Type 1 is usually called juvenile onset. Now, in type 1, the pancreas is no longer able to manufacture insulin. So that's the cause of type 1. In the adult onset, the pancreas is acting pretty good. It's secreting insulin. The insulin can no longer act against cell membranes. And I'll discuss that in another video shortly. The expected rate of diabetes is now going to climb to about 15% of the population. And these people are having kidney damage, vision damage, heart disease, and many other degenerative diseases come as a result of diabetes. And they're highly exposed to glucose, blood sugar. And the glucose now is binding to all the proteins that make up their body causing inflammation and leading to the release of what we call reactive oxygen species, which damage cell membranes. And this is the, these are the primary reasons why the diabetes is causing all this damage. And it's a major, major problem. Now, there are many endocrinologists and doctors and people talking about how to avoid diabetes and what to do. I was reading one piece here where the doctor recommended watching different carbohydrate containing foods because you don't want to get a spike in glucose, meaning they don't want the glucose level to rise high in the blood. And this is based on the idea of the glycemic index. But that's all nonsense. The, there is no physiological difference between a food that causes your blood sugar to rise say 30 points and another causes it to rise 100 points. There's no physiological difference. Uh, it is an interesting fact that it occurs and that these different carbohydrate containing foods will have that effect on the body. But all the physiological action is occurring in the body when the sugar level is lower than the sugar response of the lowest glucose producing food in the glycemic index. So you can forget about this idea of spikes. So restricting your diet to one that is limited in its glycemic index is going to be of no value. The key is that you have to limit the amount of carbohydrates you eat. You have to limit the amount of glucose that you're exposed to during the course of the day. That is the key fact. And of course, this information is becoming available now, more and more every day. We know that obesity also is a major contributor to the diabetes epidemic, and that obese individuals have a much higher rate of getting diabetes than others. Also, the lack of exercise, which occurs in most people who are diabetic and who are obese, is another major problem and a contributor to the diabetes epidemic. The primary controller that physicians are using is to try and get what they call good glucose control. That's why you see all these people going to the drugstore and buying glucose meters so they can measure the glucose in their blood and see if they can get that under control. But even good control in glucose levels is still going to cause one to have a higher level of glucose in his blood than he should have. And this will continue to increase the diabetic condition and lead to the damage because it's glucose that is the damaging agent itself. That's important to understand. The glucose is the damage agent and this will have all kinds of downstream metabolic problems because of your exposure to it. And of course, then there is the associated exposure to insulin, which the pancreas secretes in response to the higher glucose levels. 
So what you end up getting is a high insulin level in the blood, and the insulin is damaging too. There is the insulin theory of aging and disease. Now the powerhouse of your cell, as I've described in my work, is the mitochondria. I asked someone the other day if they ever even heard of the mitochondria, and they said no. So I, oh, I can assume, I live and die with mitochondria. So I can assume that a lot of people simply do not know what mitochondria are. And they're little organelles inside each cell of your body that produces energy. They produce the power that you need. And they're heavily subject to damage by inflammation, by reactive oxygen species, and by the glucose itself. And that sickens them and or kills them. And they need to be replaced constantly. And then they're, while they're still around, they're less functional. So all this is contributing to the aging process. So this is going on in the young and in the old. So the movement towards diabetes is definitely diet related and if we look at the amount of carbohydrates that we consume it's going to be the percent of the total daily calories you consume in a day and this really should be restricted to less than probably well the beginning point is about 25 percent of your total calories should be could be carbohydrate but it probably should be even less than that down around 15 percent and possibly even lower now, if you look at the new recommendations by our outstanding government advisors and nutritionists and the USDA, who's put out their new concoction called My Plate to replace the old food pyramid, if you look at what's on that plate, one quarter of the plate is fruit, one quarter is vegetables, one quarter is grains, and another quarter is your protein food. But if you add it all up, you can easily see that if you ate the way they recommend, you'd probably be consuming 70 to 85 percent of your daily calories as carbohydrate, which leads to the release of a ton of glucose into the blood. So these new recommendations are going to dramatically increase the rates of, of diabetes, and we're projecting a tremendous increase in diabetics over the coming years to as many as 30, even 40 million people. And this is going to happen because they're eating healthy. That's the argument. They're eating healthy now. They're eating healthy foods. They're staying away from red meat and fat, which is the recommendation that they've made for years and years and years. And it's going to kill people. It's going to lead to degenerative disease. It's not a pretty story. And this is just basic biochemistry. This is not really complicated stuff. Why so few of them know it, I have no idea. But I know it. And now you know it. So you've got to protect yourself in this environment because you're just getting flooded with untruthful information and dangerous information that ultimately will just harm your health. I'm Dr. Greg Allen.